Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at the cursor and I have seven examples to show you how to use it. If you're new to my channel or just haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time. Please subscribe and support my channel. I appreciate it. Let's look at the most basic cursor. Here we're going to use AdventureWorks 2019. Was successful and now we're going to declare a variable of type cursor for and then a select statement and then as soon as we declare that variable we can then open that cursor and every time we open it we have to close it and deallocate it so right now don't worry about this when you write your first cursor do the open command close and deallocate. Now, once we get in there, we can say fetch next from that cursor name. And then while it's okay, keep doing that. Let's execute that and see what happens. And notice it went out and got all that data. Now I'm going to re-execute that so you can see how kind of slow that is. And cursors are not known for their speed, but we have some ways of making it go a little bit faster, but generally they're a pretty slow operation. And that is example one. In our second example, we have declared a cursor at the top and we use the at symbol for a variable. And notice when we did our select statement, we took out two columns. And I'm going to declare variables for those two columns. And then I'm going to open up that cursor. Remember, when you write your cursor, don't worry about this. You say, build your cursor, open, close, deallocate. This right here can be problems if you're in a production environment and you forget to do these. Then we're going to fetch it from this cursor into two variables. So when this sec executes, notice when I execute that, I'm getting back department and department name. Department ID will go into this at department ID and I declare that as of type integer. And the second variable, the department name, will go into department name. And then once I get done with that, I'm gonna get inside this loop and I'm gonna keep executing this until this evaluates to not zero. Let's execute this. And notice that we were able to start at department one and execute to department 16. And we were able to build this output and you can only get it on the same line if you have everything as types var char. So you can't put an integer here and then do this and then the department name, it would fail. And that is example two. In example three, we're going to introduce begin try. So in programming, we have this mechanics called try and catch. So what we normally try to do is try something and see if it's successful. If somewhere in here we get an error, that error falls over to the catch and it only executes the catch section if and only if there was an error. But if it's successful, it will only execute the try. So you can see here, I've declared my variables. I have the same select statement as exercise two. I'm going to execute everything as I did in ex exercise two. And notice that I will print try was successful. Notice that if I get an error in here somewhere, it will come down and say catch was executed. Let's execute this SQL statement. Execute and let's take a look at our output and we have 1 through 16 and try was successful. Excellent. In this example, we are going to look at begin try and catch and this time we're actually going to throw an error. 
I'm going to throw the error 50555 with this message. Now I can name it any number I want to in a certain range. And if you don't use the correct number, it will come out and give you the range that you should use. And notice as soon as I execute this line, I stop executing the try and it comes down here to the catch. I then will do a select error message. And then if the cursor is still open, I'm going to close that cursor and deallocate it. And let's execute this. Notice that it came down there and said error line 23, my error number. Well, if I look at line 23, there it is. This is what produced the error. And then there was my error message. Now, if you go over to the tabs, notice that it'll say cursor was open, catch was executed. If we go down to my catch, notice cursor was open and then catch was executed. So far, we've been looking at forward only cursors, you know, starting with the first record and then keep going down. Now we're introducing absolute positioning. So here we're going to use the cursor scroll. And notice it's the same SQL statement. And now I'm going to say, hey, I want you to start at position two. And when you get inside the loop, I want you to skip every two records. So I get record number two, four, six, eight, ten, and so forth. Let's see this thing execute. Let's take a look at the output. And notice that we have records, the even, from two to sixteen. In this example, we're going to be using cursor scroll. And notice on our fetch, we're saying fetch last. So this will move us to the very last record. When we get inside the loop, notice that I say prior. So what this will do is go from 16 to one. Let's see this execute. And notice 16 to one. And to show that cursors can be fast, notice this cursor, forward only, read only. And notice here that we're going to be using person, person. Well, we know this one has more than 20,000 rows. And we're going to be using a cursor to go through there and produce the business identity and the last name on the screen for 20,000 rows. Let's see how fast this is. Execute and it's done. So let's see what happened here. Notice that we got all the data. And that was pretty fast, right? So once again, it's like knowing how to execute the cursor forward only, read only, it can go fast if you want it to. Of course, there's a bunch of different ways to define your cursor. You just need to find the correct pattern for your solution. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few things. Uh, please take the time and subscribe to my channel. I would truly appreciate that. See you in the next video team.